Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. Today I have another sewing machine repair job to do. So this one here I is a Brother My Style 3, or My Star 3. Um, I actually picked it up in an old shearing shed, so it was sitting underneath a whole heap of junk and without a doubt this machine was black. So it was completely seized up. The farmer who I got it from, I didn't pay anything for it. He said it didn't work um, and I tried to move it, it wouldn't free up at all and it was completely black. It was under so much junk and grease and everything like that. So I did actually clean it up and I did manage to get the machine going some time ago. But it has a broken spool pin. So on the top here is where the spool goes, where you put your spool of thread and or the alternative is to put one here. But I can't get this fixed up, so or I'm going to get this fixed up today. So stick around, I'm going to pull this apart, or at least the top apart, and see if I can refashion or repair the spool pin that used to be on here. So this is the spool pin that usually sits just about there. Okay, so I can see that there's a clean break here, but the easiest thing would be just to put some super glue on here and actually glue it together but it's not going to be stable enough so what my thought is to drill this hole out and insert the pin and glue that in after that but I think that this might be a little bit short now this has actually got a little bit broken off it as well so I've discovered that when this did break the previous owners have gone and put the spool pin inside here and I can see where this is actually joined in here so they've gone and broken that off in there as well. So I'm going to try and get that little bit out. You can actually see a little ring around here. So it shows me that they have actually used it this as a spool holder, which is the secondary spool holder that you usually get with a machine. Anyway, I'm going to pull this apart and see if we can get in there and actually fix this or make a new um, spool roll holder for the machine. If I put a reel of thread on, now this is a bigger one than I usually use, and stick that on there, I can tell straight away whether drilling a hole is actually going to be enough. So if I drilled a hole there, put the rod through, this isn't going to be enough to hold the thread because I need to have something holding the thread in place at the end here. Um, so I am going to have to refashion something else to put in here. So I have two screws to take out um, just in here and I'll just take those two screws out and that will actually um, enable me to get the top off. Now when I take this off there's actually a rod holding this together underneath. So this rod here is hold, held in place underneath the machine or underneath the plastic cover and I'll just take that out. So this is all I need to actually work on. So I've set this machine aside for the moment. Now this rod here is actually holding that lever in place but it's also holding the handle in place so if we just turn around this side that lever there is held in place on the rod and so is this handle and I've got to try and get this lever out so that I can figure out what I'm going to do with it but it's got a little um, spring in there and I'll just take that spring out Okay, I've got to get that little pin out the side there. So all I'm going to do is get my screwdriver, just a little flat screwdriver, and wedge that inside here, and then push that down. Oops, nearly got it. And that's released that. So I'll just slide that across there for now and that means that I can actually push that rod out I think. 
Okay, there's a little circlip just down that end, so I'm going to take that circlip out and then I'll be able to slide. Oh, yes, of course, there's a circlip on both sides. So I'm just going to take that little circlip out and then I'll be able to slide the rod out. Okay, I've managed to get both circ clips out and all I should be able to do is just slide that along and this should actually just pull straight through. Pop that through the other side and while I'm here I might just pop out that broken piece of the spool pin that's just in there. So I might actually make a second one so that uh, if somebody does need to use this machine later on and they need two threads, they can do that. So there's that little piece that was broken from the top of that. So that will just go together like that. But I'm not going to put... Oh, no, I'm not going to bother putting it together. Anyway, we've got this out. So now we can have a look at this and see how I'm actually going to fix this. So my th initial thought was to get rid of this and drill a hole in here and glue it, uh, put, the, put the, the stick straight through and then glue it. But because this is hollow on the other side, I might actually wedge something in there. Have a quick think about that. Chris has been good enough to let me use his shed and so you'll have to excuse the mess it's not how I like to work but I'm just going to put this little spool holder into the vise and I'm just going to use a hacksaw to take off that little broken bit from the original spool holder And I'll just sand that bit even. So I've drilled a hole with my 5mm drill bit and I'm just going to neaten that up a little bit. It's going to get messy again anyway when I put some glue on. And it didn't go through to the other side which is great. Now I found a 5mm vintage knitting needle at home at the shop so I'm actually going to use that. And I'm just going to cut that down. So I need to take the head off. I'm actually going to use um, this to make two spool pins. So I'm going to cut this one in half and I'll have one spool pin to sit on top of the machine and the other one to sit horizontally and the horizontal one will actually just go into, into this spool holder like that. But I'll actually have the pointy end here sticking out of the spool holder. 
Now I've got my five mil knitting needle cut down to size. So I've got two spool pins here. One I'm the one with the point is the one that's going to go into my spool holder and that'll just sit in place like that. So this one I need to glue in. The other one, I've just cut this as a spare, so if anybody decides they want to have two spool pins for twin needle sewing, then that's available for them as well. Now, I've been out to the shed, and Chris assures me that JB Weld is the product to use to be able to fill up this and enable the spool pin to sit in there, because at the moment it's a little bit loose, and it's never going to sit in place when it's on the machine. So I need to glue it in. So this is my little gluing plate and I get the honours of opening up the JB Weld. So apparently I have to mix up equal parts of this JB Weld. Hopefully that'll work because it looks like there's more black that needs to come out. And I've just got to mix that around. And once that's mixed, it should be ready to insert. So I want this inside the hole here. Oh, now the first thing I'm going to do is actually put some tape on this. It'll make it a little bit easier for me to clean. So I'm just going to put some scotch tape around there. And that should be just about right. So that'll just keep that a little bit cleaner. Okay. So I'm going to fill up this hole as much as I can because I want the um, JB Weld to have enough filler on the inside to actually hold my spool pin in place. So you can see just inside just inside there it's actually starting to fill up. And that can go right inside. So you can see the needle has actually gone straight in there. You may even still see some of the needle sticking out without the glue filling it up. So I'm just going to spread some more glue inside so that it fills up the entire area. Okay, now I'm going to leave that to sit. It says to leave it for up to about 50, well actually 24 hours for the best bond. Um, sets in 4 to 6 hours, cures in 15 to 24. So I'm just going to leave that aside and let that set. So the glue has, the JB Welt has actually set really really well. This is quite firm and all I've got to do now is take off all this tape and clean it up a bit. I 
actually that looks pretty good. So that's ready to pop back into the machine. So all I need to do is push this straight back in here. This is the top of the machine. Push that in and that'll sit like that. Probably could have done it straighter, but it's how it is. And I just need to get the rod through here and back in back in through there and I'll put this clip back in place and those circlips will need to go back as well before I can actually put the top back on. Alright, that's it. So that's ready to go back on to the machine now. So there we go. We have a brand new um, cotton spool over the top of the machine, which is the horizontal one that used to be there. And fits the thread perfectly. That's pretty cool. And with the other one um, that I've made, I've just cut off an extension for the knitting needle. If a person wants to use a secondary spool pin, they can just sit that one in the top. So that's usually just provided as an extra in the machines when you buy them. But this one's going to do the job perfectly. Go, a machine that was in the in a shearing shed all black and scungy um, that had a couple of broken spool holders is now perfectly functional again um, I had a skewer or something sticking out of this so that I could use the machine and test it it works beautifully um, so I can now sell this machine I actually have a buyer for it so um, yeah perfectly functional spool holder working again and really easy. All it cost me was the price of one knitting needle, which is something that I've had in my stash for a really long time. Hope you've enjoyed this video and if you'd like to see me repair anything else or sew up a storm, let me know, put something in the comments down below and I will catch you next time. Bye for now.